What's going on YouTube? So we've spent the last week extensively testing out this all new 2023 Toyota Sequoia. And we want to know, is this a great full-size SUV to live with? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, so let's get things started here today with our spec dump. So underneath of the Sequoia, it skips the Tundra's base engine and goes straight to the iForce Max hybrid system. Now this ain't no Prius though. This has 437 horsepower, 583 pound feet of torque. You're gonna have a 10 speed automatic transmission, standard two wheel drive, optional four wheel drive. Your fuel economy certainly isn't gonna be a Prius either. 22 miles a gallon with two wheel drive, 20 miles a gallon combined with four wheel drive. Well, we'll go ahead and close up the hood. Of course, later on in the video, we're gonna take this out on the road, see the power, get a sound level reading, and to talk about the real world fuel economy. So as far as the exterior design, I think Toyota has done a really good job here because over the course of this week, this has actually gotten quite a bit of attention as you drive past people. They really take a look at this because it is a handsome looking SUV and it looks pretty luxurious as well when you choose the capstone trim level. Now, every single version of this Sequoia does have a different front end design. I'm not gonna just describe all of them to you, but as you can see with the capstone, this is gonna get you kind of the most bling of the lineup. So we, this large grille here is gonna be finished in a chrome mesh. Of course, your Toyota badge does have a little bit of blue accenting to signify it as a hybrid. And then down below, you'll notice some gloss black accents as well as some silver accents on this capstone model. Now, another way you can tell this is a premium version of the Sequoia is because we have really nice LED headlights. Now, don't get me wrong, every single version of Sequoia does have standard LED headlights as well as LED fog lamps. But if you choose the platinum trim level or above, that's gonna get you the premium setup. These are auto leveling and they also come with these really cool dynamic turn signal indicators. Now, as we head around to the rear design, you're gonna see that same really handsome look continue back here as well. Yeah, I'm normally not a fan of big block SUVs, but this is a handsome block SUV. Now, as far as some of the design elements, we have a spoiler up top, we have a rear wiper, some silver trim right here in the middle, which is a little bit harder to see on this white model, but let's take a look at these taillights. These are massive taillights. Let's see if all three elements are LED. All right, so we've got a brake light that's LED, reverse light that's LED, and our turn signal is also gonna be LED. It's gonna be the same thing as the brake light and it's also gonna be a really cool sequential design. Now, you get this premium version of the tail light if you go for the platinum trim or higher with the sequential abilities, but all of the models are going to have a standard LED tail light. So thumbs up for me on that Toyota. Dropping down, Sequoia is spelled out across the back. In the lower area, you will notice that you're gonna have a body color, kind of black piece as well as a silver piece to give it a lot of visual diversity. Although no model besides the TRD Pro is gonna have exposed exhaust outlets. As far as your tow rating is concerned, the maximum a Sequoia can tow is about 9,500 pounds. That's with an SR5 model. This Sequoia capstone with four wheel drive as equipped is about 8,900 pounds. And I do wanna point out you can get a rear auto leveling air suspension optional on the platinum and capstone model. Now, as far as the wheels are concerned, it's just like the front end design. You've got a lot of different choices depending on which trim you choose. It's gonna start out with 18 inch alloys, but when you make it to the capstone, that's gonna get you this exclusive 22 inch alloy wheel. This is the largest wheel ever equipped to a Sequoia. And as you can see, it's got a very elaborate design with a lot of spokes, a lot of different colors and finishes here. I think it looks quite nice here in person. Now, as I move up here to the mirrors, I've got some really nice things to tell you. Standard heating, power folding, auto dimming, and blind spot monitoring. Really impressed to see that standard even on the SR5 model. And if you choose the capstone, you will also get the chrome cap up here and towing mirrors are available on all the trim levels. 
Now, in the great words of ZZ Top, the Sequoia is just a sharp dress man through and through, front, rear, and side design. I really like the way this Sequoia looks. It's very boxy, has a truckish vibe, and it just looks good here in person. Now, as far as some of the design elements, we have some chrome roof rails up here at the top, chrome window surrounds, chrome door handles for the capstone model. It's going to have the most bling of all the Sequoias. And as far as your length is concerned, you're looking at 208.1 inches, which is about two inches shorter than a top for reference and there is not going to be a long wheelbase version of the Sequoia so keep that in mind. Now as far as your safety systems are concerned Toyota keeps it nice and simple. Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 is standard on every Sequoia model so that means that all four of your active safety systems are standard equipment. But guys there's a really luxurious interior that's two-tone on this capstone model so let's go ahead and check that out. Now you heard Mason mention it, there is a beautiful cabin inside, so let's go ahead and get to that. But first, take a look at our key fob. Of course, we do have standard smart entry, as you'd expect. Um, nothing special going on with this key fob. Unlike some of the other Toyotas, it doesn't have any Sequoia branding or anything like that. Just reach behind the handle, that will unlock the door, of course. The mirrors will electrically fold out. You have power running boards here with the capstone, and take a look at that beautiful two-tone cabin. This has the, what I like to call, panda color scheme of black and white. Now let's talk about the materials and color options that you can get for all of the trim levels. So you will start off with fabric seating. You can move to leatherette seating on the next trim level, real leather on the platinum trim level, and then this fully loaded capstone is gonna get you beautiful semi-aniline leather. As you can see, this has a really nice quilted design. This is the only color option that you can get, the black and the white, but as you can see, the black is the area where you set on so you don't have to worry about stains from your blue jeans. Now, as far as the seats, when you go to the platinum or the capstone, these are gonna be 14-way power adjusting with the extra four-way lumbar support and power thigh extension. But let's go ahead and climb inside. Now, getting inside is nice and easy with those running boards. You also have a leather-covered assist grip. Now, you saw how nice these seats were, so let's go ahead and check out how nice the rest of the cabin is. So let's start out over here with our door trim. You're gonna see really nice finishings over here. We've got the white leather over the armrest as well as the center portion there. We have leather across the upper part so you can rest your arm up here with a nice stitching detail as well. All four windows, one touch automatic by the way, and you do have two person memory seating. Now as we move to the upper dash, a lot of this is gonna be finished in a nice leather material through here with a stitching detail. I will point out though that this part of the dashboard and all this and the extreme upper part is gonna be hard touch still. As we move to the middle portion, you're gonna notice some real walnut wood trim here with the capstone model. And I also wanna point out that capstone branding does illuminate here at night. Down below, we have a lot of leatherette all through here with stitching details finished in that same white color. And you'll notice more of that authentic wood trim all through here and more leather along the console. Everything does fit together extremely well. So let's go ahead and fire it up. But like always, let's go ahead and move in a little closer for a first person perspective at all of the features. We're gonna start out with the gauge cluster. So unlike the Tundra, which of course is this model sibling, we have a standard 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster on all versions of the Sequoia. As you can see, we've got some really crisp, nice looking graphics. Uh, this is kind of just the default setup right now. You can reorganize to allow different kinds of information with your more traditional style multifunction display over there on the left hand side. Now, in addition to that, if you choose the platinum or the capstone, you are going to get a very large head up display up here as well. Now pulling back to the steering wheel, we have the latest Toyota design. This is a really nice steering wheel. It's nice and large, has a really good perforated leather here on the side with the uh, silver accenting going through there. As far as the wheel itself, it is going to be power adjusting on the top two trim levels, and it is also heated on your top three trim levels. But let's go ahead and take a look at interior storage next. So turning over here to our center console, we've got a lot of different storage solutions. So first of all, let me open up this piece of wood. 
that gives you a little bit of storage for a small item. This little part right here actually slides back to give you quick access inside of the center console without opening up the whole thing. But when you do open up the whole thing, you're gonna find a ton of storage. Definitely plenty of space to stick a thick stack of coupons to feed all of your hungry kids in the back. Now in addition to that, you've got your two USB ports inside of there. Press that, it's gonna give you your two cup holders. And then up in the very front, we have a large pad. This is a wireless phone charging pad as well on the Platinum and the Capstone models. Now pulling back to the shifter, you'll notice that unlike competitors such as the Tahoe, we have a nice traditional style shifter on board. Of course, just pull back for drive, bump over here to the left if you wanna shift manually. And when you go into reverse, you will see a 360 degree camera system on every single trim level. Yep, you heard me right. Even the SR5 will come with a 360 degree camera system. Certainly appreciated on a vehicle this big. Helps with parking and everything like that. Plus you have some different views that you can switch between down there at the bottom. And then in front of the shifter, this is where your electronic parking brake is as well as your brake hold. Now above the shifter, you do have a trailer backup assist. This is standard on your upper end trim levels and available on the lower end trim levels. And we also have our trailer brake controller located right underneath of the push button start. Behind the shifter is where you'll find your four wheel drive controls. And we also have our drive mode controller where you can twist between various different drive modes, which will display right there on the gauge cluster. Let's move on up here and take a look at our climate controls next. So we do have a three zone automatic climate control setup standard on all models. Adjustments very simple. Just move these toggles up and down to change your temperature and then click that button there when you wanna make rear adjustments. Additionally, you will find heated seats. Those are gonna be standard on all models as well, but seat ventilation will be reserved for the limited trim level or above. Now located right here inside of the climate controls, we have a nice large volume knob to control two different audio systems. So either a standard eight speaker sound system or on the platinum and above an available 14 speaker JBL premium sound system. This being the capstone of course means we have the high end one. So we'll go ahead and give it a sample right now. Overall sound quality of this system is pretty decent, although I will say for the $80,000 price point, uh, sound is a little muddled. I've definitely heard some crisper sound systems in vehicles that cost this much, including this vehicle's rivals. I also want to point out that over here, these uh, speaker grills, they're not actually metal. Those are plastic. They just look like metal. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and talk about our display. So as you can see, we have a very large display and thankfully this is gonna be included on everything except for the base SR5 model. That model is gonna have an eight inch display, but this is gonna be a 14 inch display and it's running the latest Toyota infotainment system. Now we were very impressed with this display over the past week. First of all, as you can see, when we're running Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you have very vivid graphics, takes up the entire display and looks super nice. I'll toggle back into the main Toyota system and give you guys a look at that. This is our built-in navigation system. Really nice graphics on board for this. Quick performance, and it's simple to use because you have the easy shortcuts down there on the side. By the way, your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto both run wirelessly. Now above the display, you do have a little storage bin. You also will find your mirror. It's gonna be standard auto dimming with Homelink Universal Remotes. But if you choose the platinum trim or the capstone, that's where you'll get this rear camera mirror that cuts out all the rear obstructions. Moving up top, you will find a standard sunroof on every single Sequoia. 
However, if you want the panoramic sunroof you see here, you are going to have to choose one of the top two trim levels as standard equipment or option it on to the lower trim levels. And of course, this front panel does still open up. So sitting in the Sequoia Capstone's rear seat, it's going to be a mixed bag of emotions for me. And I'll kind of get into a lot of that in just a second. But let's go ahead and talk about the space first. We're looking at a little over 39 inches of legroom, 38 inches of headroom, which has placed this about an inch less than the Chevy Tahoe for reference. But this is still a very big and spacious offering here in the second row. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that these seats uh, cannot slide forward and back. Uh, so they are going to be stuck in this position right here. That being said, you can recline them a really good ways to get a little bit more comfortable. Now, this, I'm five foot nine for reference. This seat is adjusted to Drew, who is five foot eight. So if you're curious about how much space it is, you know I brought my ruler handy dandy ruler 11 inches of space between my knees and the seat back that's a lot of space guys my feet can also slide up underneath the seat so overall i'm very comfortable you might also notice that we do have the captain's chairs on this particular model that is going to be standard on the capstone as is pretty much every other feature uh, you get that if you go for a platinum trim or above now as far as the features here in the middle let's go ahead and dive into those we do have two cup holders up top nicely leather wrapped as well i could see this may be getting ruined by a, a drink though and then if we drop down below that we're going to have our own climate controls we're also going to have uh, heated rear seats but not just heated rear seats we have a really bougie feature guys we have three stage ventilated rear seats and that's actually not exclusive to just the capstone model. That's platinum and capstone. So I like that Toyota is including that because the Chevy Tahoe only allows you to have sweaty crack and not ventilated out. Sequoia allows for both, which is very nice. Now dropping down below that, we do have a USB port, uh, type C variety, type A variety, and we also have a household style outlet. So you can keep everything nice and charged up. Here in the center between the seats, we do have two more cup holders, a little bit of storage, perfect for a coupon. Then if we check out our door trim, we're going to have rear window sunshades. That's going to be standard on the limited trim level and above. It's going to be nicely finished as well, leather on pretty much every bit of it. We do also have some open pour wood. And down in the very bottom, it appears like we have a lot of door storage. It looks like a bottle storage as well as some door storage. Now guys, I said this was a little bit of a mixed bag and the mixed bag starts here when we go into the third row. So let's go ahead and check that out. So uh, in order to get back here, Toyota made it nice and easy. You just grab this little lever that folds the uh, seat down and kind of allows it to flop out of place, which is why you can't slide it because it is fixed right here. And then climbing back into the third row, let's go ahead and see how that is. Obviously this is a three row SUV, so you want the third row to be good. And sitting back here, this is one of the most disappointing things about the Sequoia, especially when you compare it to some of the competitors. Now, as far as the space is concerned, we're looking at 28 inches as a minimum. 33 inches is what you're seeing right now for your legroom figure because you can actually slide these th third row seats uh, quite a few uh, inches back and forth to depending on if you need more cargo capacity or if you need more third row space. That's nice that Toyota does give you that flexibility. Uh, that being said though, this is gonna be a lot worse than something like a Chevy Tahoe for instance, because we have not switched to a independent rear suspension, uh, which means that your thigh support is gonna be very lacking. So we have you know about six inches between my thighs and the uh, seat bottom so it's just not as comfortable as some of the rivals as far as how it rates on our scale i would say this is good for uh in-laws uh whereas some of the competition is fit for a king honestly now as far as other features that toyota's throwing in they have made it you know nicer than just your average third row so we do have vents up here at the top we're also going to have third row window sunshade so if anything's bothering you and coming in in the side window you can do that there's two cup holders and you're also going to notice this little button right here that allows you to kind of go back a little bit although <laughs> i'm not too tall and my head is hitting the ceiling so if you want to recline toyota does give you that functionality so walking up to the cargo area, of course, this is a three row full size SUV. You're gonna need to store stuff in it. So let's go ahead and check that out. Before we open up the tailgate, I wanna point one nice feature out. That's uh, if you locate that button right there, you can pop the rear glass independently. Um, of course, the previous generation Sequoia actually had the roll down window, that's gone. Uh, but I do like that Toyota still gives you this functionality because 
The vast majority of the competition does not give you that. Now, as far as the tailgate itself, it is going to be a hands-free power tailgate if you go for SR5 premium trim levels and above. And they do have a nice little sensor right here for or a little logo that shows you where to kick, which honestly I appreciate because most brands don't do that and you don't know where to kick under the tailgate. Now, as far as the space is concerned in this Sequoia, you're looking at 22 cubic feet behind the third row, 49 cubic feet behind the second row and as a maximum 87 cubic feet. Now, actually what you're seeing here is 11 cubic feet. Uh, the 22 cubic feet uh, rating is for this configuration right here with the seats uh, slid forward six inches. Um, that gives you a little bit more space in the third row, although I will say even with this configuration, it's still not a lot of space uh, by any means. Now, as far as how that compares to a Tahoe, the Tahoe is gonna be about 122 cubic feet as a maximum. So you're looking at a significant disadvantage over uh, its main competition. It's actually gonna be less than the Toyota Grand Highlander as well, which is that upcoming Toyota model that actually will slot down below this Sequoia. But as far as the space, it's not awful, I will say. So, uh, you know, that's just something to consider when you're looking at buying a Sequoia. Now, as far as other features that Toyota's thrown in, they have, you know, tried to make the most of the space. So you'll notice I can actually detach this and raise it up and kind of make my own shelf here if I can get them. There we go. Um, get it locked in. So if you slid this back, as you can see, you kind of have like a nice little shelf. You kind of separate your stuff there. That's a nice feature that Toyota's throwing in. There is not going to be any underfloor storage, so do keep that in mind. And then if we look over here at the right side, we have a household style outlet. But you'll notice I haven't mentioned, you know, that the third row is power folding. That is, of course, a nice feature that Toyota is throwing in. So you can press these buttons here. That's going to go ahead and fold the third row down. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, though, is this is as flat as it's going to get. You're not going to be able to, you know, fold the seats up out of the way, or, and they're not going to fold into the floor. This is the configuration you're going to have with the third row folded. So that's a little bit of a disadvantage as well. And we did take a second here to fold down the second row seats, see how much uh, space is between the front seat and the rear of the cargo area. I'm gonna try and keep it level here. We're looking at about 89 inches, so I'd say you're safe to put like a 85 inch flat screen TV back here, but hopefully it's not too tall uh, considering that you know this is as flat as the floor gets. And if you wanna make it even, you could actually put this shelf back up here. And then that kind of makes it even all the way across. All right, it's time for our test drive. So of course we're gonna accelerate, we're gonna get the sound level reading, we're gonna talk about how it is to live with this Sequoia. But first off, we have to sample all that power. All right, <laughs> there's a little bit past 60 miles an hour. Wow. Dang, I think <laughs> the Sequoia knew it was on camera. That's faster than it has been for the rest of the week. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, when wow. you go full throttle, honest, yeah. I mean, of course, day-to-day -day driving, you don't go full throttle that often, but yeah, full throttle, that torque tickled me belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, as we mentioned in the spec dump, this actually does have more standard power than the optional engine on the Tahoe. Uh, so 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque. That's also more torque uh, by a significant measure than the Tahoe, uh, even in its optional engine. Um, it's gonna be a three and a half liter twin turbo V6. Of course, it's uh, iForce Max, which means that it's paired to a nickel hydride battery pack uh, to give you that electric torque off the line mm -hmm. and to just boost overall power figures as well. That's right. Um, you know, we talked about this a little bit at the very beginning, but it's really important to emphasize this, yes, is a hybrid, but it's a hybrid designed to boost power more so than it is designed to boost efficiency. That's why it's not weak or anything like that. You punch that throttle and it's like no hybrid you've ever driven before. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, 
definitely. Uh, we've had we've had Tahoes, you know, for an entire week back here in Lexington. This is this is quicker for sure than a than a Tahoe in a straight line. And um, I will say that the electric torque kind of kind of gets you off the line a little bit. Um, but obviously, it's not enough power just <laughs> just in the battery pack to get this big beast going up to speed. So it's pretty much going to kick the engine on as soon as you tap the throttle. Yeah, pretty much. Um, as far as the hybrid system, we'll speak a little bit about that. Toyota says it operates up to 18 miles an hour. Uh, in real world experience, you're lucky to get that high before yeah. the engine kicks on. Um, if you are really, really gingerly maybe taking off and going downhill as well, you can get up to about 20 miles an hour. But like he was saying, you know, most of the time, it's just a big vehicle, so you're going to really require the engine most of the time when you're taking off. Now, as we're coming to a stop here, the engine did go ahead and turn off. So as we were speaking about with this hybrid powertrain, I think the thing you'll notice is when you start to decelerate, uh, it'll go ahead and turn the engine off. But as you can see, we're at four miles an hour. The engine had already kicked back on to give you that power that you need to accelerate. Also, listen to that sound. Yeah. Uh, this is important because twin turbo V6, you're thinking maybe it doesn't sound very good. Well, Toyota, they've done some little bit of uh, fakery here, but the end result is that it sounds basically like a V8. I mean, it's not the real engine noise. It's definitely synthesized using the speaker system, but it sounds good, so I'm not mad about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it sounds really good. Um, it sounds trucky, which is exactly what people want if you buy in this segment. Yeah, I mean, the previous version with the 5.7 liter V8, that was a very growly V8. So I'm glad we haven't, uh, you know, lost that with the new generation. All right, shall we take a sound level reading at 55 miles per hour? Speed up here a little bit. Alrighty, so it looks like the lowest we're getting here is 58.7 decibels, which appears, compared to the rivals, to be a little bit louder than the Tahoe and the Expedition, which we both sampled uh, this year as well. On the exact same stretch of road. Um, so, yeah. Not, a, not by a huge amount, but it also doesn't really surprise me because this one seems to have a little bit of like a, a wind noise whistle yeah. that comes off of the mirrors as well as the sunroof. So with that I, kind of defect there, it doesn't surprise me that's a little louder. And I do think that the amplification noise that Toyota is pumping in is pretty loud as well. Oh yeah, for sure. It's kind of more gingerly uh, taking off there. I do want to talk about your 10-speed automatic transmission that you have on board with the Sequoia. So um, it's a very good transmission. Uh, certainly, we've had no issues with it over the past week. It gives you exactly the power that you need when you need it. Um, so I really have nothing else to say. And in, in the times that you don't need a bunch of power, it just blends right into the background. Now, if you see me poking this uh, camera here, <laughs> the mount just broke right before we decided to shoot this video, so it's uh, kind of just swaying around. So I apologize for that somewhat distraction there, but I'm trying to keep it roughly level. That way we yeah. can, you can see our faces while we're describing this Sequoia. Now as we go over some of the uh, bumps in the road, I think this would be a good time to talk about the ride quality, of course. Um, so to be clear, you do have an available rear air suspension and adaptive suspension option that you can choose on your upper yep. trim levels. We don't have that option. So this is the standard suspension that's shared with the rest of the lineup here in the capstone. And uh, you know, it's a good arrangement. This feels roughly in line with most of the competition. It has a kind of a more traditional truck feel. Um, so if you're comparing to something like a Tahoe with the optional air suspension, 
it's not going to be comparable to that. It is definitely going to be a little bit rougher than that. But as far as just, you know, being used to a typical SUV feel or the previous generation, this feels pretty nice and smooth out on a road going over bumps. Uh, definitely dampens out the big stuff and you just have that typical small vibrations that enter the cabin. Yeah, and the front seats are very comfortable. Very comfortable. Um, the second row seats are semi-comfortable. Third row, I haven't tested out while we're driving, but um, definitely the front seats are comfortable. So if you're the owner, I think you'll be very happy with that. All right, now it's time for today's slam dunk and air ball. So I will start off with the air ball. I think you probably know what we're going to say because we pointed <laughs> out these negatives uh, yeah. in Mason's section specifically. That third row and cargo capacity are certainly compromised compared to the main competition. Um, not having the independent rear suspension just kind of um, hampers your functionality. Yeah. There's no other way to really put that. You know, it's it's a three-row, you know, full-size SUV that's very large that has a surprisingly, you know, small cargo capacity and surprisingly not as good third row as some of the competition. But that being said, if that stuff does not matter to you um, and you're just buying mainly based on what we're going to say the slam dunk today is, uh, then, you know, that that's something just to consider there. Uh, but today's slam dunk is going to be the exterior design. This Sequoia, throughout the past week that we've been uh, driving around this model, it's gotten a ton of attention, which is very odd for a three-row full-size SUV. It doesn't really matter what it is. You tend to not get a lot of attention, um, but this has. And I think that's really a testament to just how good this Sequoia looks. Now we just passed a gas station, so let's talk about gas mileage. Does the hybrid version of this get really good fuel economy? So, ratings. For the uh, two-wheel drive version, 21 city, 24 highway, 22 combined. The four-wheel drive version is going to be 19 city, 22 highway, 20 combined. Uh, that's going to be 2 to 4 MPG better than a comparable Tahoe or Expedition. So um, you do have some advantage, but obviously you'll notice that's not a Prius type no. of fuel economy. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly yeah. not what you call good, but maybe you could say it's good for as much power th as this has yeah. and how big it is. Yeah, that would be what I'd say. And as far as our real world uh, seven day fuel economy for the Sequoia, we've been getting uh, about 15.2 miles per gallon. Now, do keep in mind, we've been completely in the city, so it's really no highway uh, figure in that. And also, you know, I'd say we drive a little bit faster because we're trying to test we're out the car it, yeah. um, than the average person. So I'd say those fuel economy figures would probably be kind of on point of what the EPA is saying. Now, if you choose to buy one of these, let's talk about the warranty. It's going to be Toyota's uh, typical warranty, three year, 36,000 miles for the basic warranty, five year, 60,000 miles for the powertrain warranty. Um, you do have up to uh, eight years and 150,000 miles for the battery components specifically, and then you have two years and 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. And let's go ahead and talk about the pricing for this all new Toyota Sequoia. Now, the prices are gonna rise from the previous generation model, but it's still very competitive in the segment as a whole. So we're gonna start at a base price of 58,365 for the SR5 model. There are several different trim levels for you to pick from. So limited 64,000, platinum 70,000, TRD Pro 76,000, and Capstone's gonna start at 75,000. Um, do keep in mind those are with two wheel drive besides for the TRD Pro, which comes standard with four-wheel drive. Now, this particular tester, of course, we have the fully loaded capstone model. We also have four-wheel drive, uh, the special paint color, a few little extra accessories, plus the 1595 destination. We're looking at 80906 So a little over $80,000 for the Sequoia capstone, which is, like I said, very competitive with a lot in the segment. 
But guys, that's going to wrap up our in-depth seven-day review of this all-new 2023 Toyota Sequoia Capstone. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. You all help us get access to cars like this to test out for a full seven days as well as attend automotive events and programs where we can show you guys the coolest content first. So please subscribe, tell a friend, tell a family member. Also support the channel by following us on TikTok and Instagram, buying some merch, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.